Hello, welcome to the Monday, May 21st, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Reston, Virginia. Ramco Verhoef, the latest addition to our handler team, came across an interesting new attack against a Redis server. Now, the ultimate vulnerability being exploited here isn't new and has been exploited in the past. It's, well, a very simple remote code execution vulnerability, which actually is a feature in Redis. Redis by design has the ability to write arbitrary files without requesting authentication. After all, Redis is really not supposed to run exposed to the internet. Now in this particular case, and that's also typical for this kind of exploit against Redis, the attacker is creating a cron job that then executes the actual malicious code. In this case, just downloads a bash script and then executes it. In this particular case, the bash script is actually quite complex. It lowers a number of different security settings, don't necessarily want to go over all of them, changes name servers, and well, for good measure, finally then launches a crypto coin miner. Affected systems will also then start scanning for additional exposed Redis servers. And Google announced that it will remove the secure indicator from HTTPS pages. Now, this may sound odd when you look at it initially, but really makes sense in the way that Google is now suggesting that HTTPS should be the default. So what will happen first is that instead of seeing the lock symbol and the word secure starting in September, you will only see the lock symbol for HTTPS websites and later even the lock will be removed. Now what Google will move to instead is that not secure pages will be labeled as not secure in particular if you're entering data into these pages then the word not secure will be emphasized in the URL bar. There is no date on the final change but I would expect it sometime early 2019 maybe late in 2018. Of course, overall, it makes sense to consider HTTPS the default and the current model where users are not warned about HTTP pages, but are only told about HTTPS pages sort of uh, doesn't really make sense. The problem, of course, is that users are used to look out for at least the lock icon. So you have to retrain some of your users. And currently, Traytech Viger routers are being actively exploited with a new cross-site request forging exploit. The vulnerability being exploited here hasn't been made public until this exploit was released. Now, late last week, Traytech came up with firmware patches. If you happen to use any of their routers, and I believe they're quite popular, for example, in England, not so much in the US, then you should patch as soon as possible. The current exploit is changing DNS settings, so also double check and make sure that your DNS settings didn't get altered. And that's actually a good check you should do periodically on any router. These cross-site request forging vulnerabilities are quite common and they're very often exploited by DNS changers. And well, if there's probably something that we don't need and it's new ways to exploit the Spectre vulnerability, but they didn't ask me, so we got some new methods anyway. And in this case, they're actually affecting the system management mode on Intel CPUs. Now, the system management mode on these CPUs is supposed to be isolated from the operating system. It deals with sort of the underpinning hardware on the system. And using the Spectre vulnerability, you're able to essentially breach the trust boundary and enable exploit code to read SMM memory. On a good note, it looks like the original Spectre variant 1 patches will protect you from this particular exploit. And while we're talking about hardware vulnerability, there are also two new exploits for the older Rowhammer vulnerability. Remember, this is the vulnerability in DRR RAM that allows an attacker to flip 
unrelated bits in memory by quickly flipping bits that the attacker has access to. Now, so far, this was really just believed to be a local purge escalation vulnerability. But last week, two different proof of concept exploits were released that allow to actually exploit Rowhammer over the network. To exploit this, the attacker has to bombard the network with UDP packets. Uh, looks like the data rate has to be in the 500 megabit range. So this is nothing that you would commonly see exploited sort of remotely, more a local network issue. Even if you do have a gigabit internet connection, you are unlikely going to see a full 500 megabit of traffic hitting your system. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.